What's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead with my six things I hate about this car since everybody's doing theirs. I actually had to make a list because they don't bother me too much. But here it goes. Number one, and I'm, I'm not too sure why this hasn't been being mentioned more because this has been a problem for years. Not only this is not exclusive to chargers. This goes for chargers, challengers, 300s, magnums, all the, this is the car with that same body type is the weight. The car is just too heavy. I, I mean, I like the spacious back seat we get here and the spacious trunk, but why should the car be that heavy? I understand that it's a muscle car. I get that, but it's also supposed to be fast. Just think of how much performance we're losing in all these cars, not just the Scat Pack. Even the V6 Charger would be so much better performing if it just weighed a lot less. And I say a lot because both the Camaro and the Mustang weigh significantly less than these cars, and there's no reason for that. I mean, I'm not an engineer by all means, but what is on this car that's not on the Mustang that just makes it so much heavier? There's no reason a V6 Mustang should be outrunning a 5.7 Hemi. There's just no excuse for that. And so, which brings me to number two, which this is both a like and dislike for me, but is the Uconnect. This, the one, this is also not exclusive to the Charger. This is for the 15 and 16 one. It's just extremely laggy at times. Even now, look how long this is taking. Okay, so it, let's see, perfect example. We're still not going here. Stations still haven't loaded. Sometimes when you're switching stations back and forth, I'll click one and it just won't respond. For I, and this is no exaggeration, for a good 10 to 15 seconds, nothing will happen. Just like your computer when it's lagging up, after that 10 seconds, all of a sudden everything that I did will just happen all at once. I don't know why, this has been happening more and more lately too. This also happened with my old charger, but the, the second thing about this, the Uconnect is that there's no Android Auto. And I called Uconnect and asked them, why, why do we not have that? And they, gave, they fed me the same bullshit that they fed me with my 14 charger, that due to hardware limitations, our 15 and 16 models are basically screwed. They're going to have Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay on the 17 models, which is a load of bullshit, because hardware and software is something that I that I do know about and I know for a fact that there's nothing that Android Auto requires that's not in this radio it has Bluetooth we have the USB ports in here somewhere <laughs> okay there so why is why is it that we cannot have Android Auto a hardware limitation would be like okay suppose it needed Bluetooth but it doesn't because you can plug it into the USB well let's just assume that it needed Bluetooth and this radio didn't have a Bluetooth antenna. So, okay, so that's a hardware limitation. This is the same crap I got when I called them and asked, when I had my 14 charger, I asked them, when are we going to get this look that the 15 chargers got? Just the look. And, they, and I was told that even the look is a hardware limitation, that the 14 radios, the look can't be changed to this, which is a load of bullshit. A simple software update can change the way something looks. There's... I know for a fact by how laggy this radio is that it's the same exact radio or very similar to the radio that's in the older chargers, the 11 through 14. There's also, this is also why I want Android Auto so bad is the fucking this ding thing. Is the, uh, the navigation. Okay, so if you're like me with subs and you're continuously, every song, adjusting the volume, if you're getting a navigation prompt, like, turn right at so-and-so street while you're adjusting the volume, it'll stop adjusting the volume of your radio and begin to adjust the volume of the navigation prompts, which is super annoying. I don't know why they have it like this. This is, it's been like this since 
Uconnect has been here. Why isn't there just a setting you can go to and change the volume in here and lock it at that so that when you're adjusting your radio volume, you don't keep accidentally adjusting the navigational volume? I mean, until it happens to you, you don't understand how irritating that is. But, like, in my like video, I will say some good things about this radio. It's definitely improved from my 14 radio that I used to have. And that's going to bring me to number three, and that's the crappy headlights it comes with. As you can see, I don't have HIDs. The lens is, by, is not what I'm complaining about. It's a very nice lens it comes with. I like it a lot better than the older chargers. But a $48,000 car, whether or not you have the technology package, as Dodge calls it, should come with HIDs. There's absolutely no excuse for that in 2016. And that's going to bring me to number four. This is also not exclusive to the charger. And this happened to me with my old uh, 300 as well. It's improved, but definitely not exclusive to the charger. Though you get these nice Brembo, bra <laughs> Brembo brakes, they squeak randomly. Like, the car is only two months old, and it's... It's not all the time, I have to give it that. It, I, don't, I haven't noticed if it's when I'm driving, if it's when it's hot, if it's when it's cold, if it's when they're wet. I have no idea how to get it to do it, to complain to them about it. So just taking it in is not an option. But it'll just randomly squeak. Like, not just a, a quick squeak. Just an extremely loud, just as you're stopping, like a train is stopping. And I will say, on my, on my 300C, it used to do it every single time I stopped. It's definitely improved now, but still, that's ab there's no excuse for that. You should not, I mean, what are these brakes, 250 a piece to replace for pads, and it's squeaking like that? If someone told me it's that price, I don't know for sure, I haven't looked it up yet. But you shouldn't have to be, if you got Brembo brakes, you should not have to be upgrading pads from the factory already. And that's going to take me to number five, which is we don't get the SRT features in the driving pages. You have to buy a Taser, which is not even made by Dodge, to get your SRT pages and apps and stuff. Which, again, they claim hardware limitations or whatever. Which is bullshit, because clearly it works. Oh, I'm not going to turn it on to do it right now. But I did it in another video. Everything works, except for the adjustable suspension, because with the Scat Pack, you don't get that. But regardless, you know, you're still paying almost $50,000. Why don't we get the SRT pages? They have it locked to, I'm guessing, to make you want to buy the SRT model more so. And that's going to bring me to number six, the final thing that I can think of so far that I do not like about this car, which is also not exclusive to chargers, is that from now on, not from, I don't know when the exact date is, but in the future, Chrysler has announced that all their cars will be built in Mexico. That is bullshit. The United States bailed Chrysler out, I believe, two times from going bankrupt, and now they're going to take all of, our, all of the Dodges, everything, all their cars, and build them in Mexico, and their excuse was that they need more room here to build Dodge trucks. That's a load of bullshit. I see, every other car I see is a Charger. I don't see the trucks. And furthermore, why don't they just build more factories here? Rather than shipping it off to Mexico. It's just like every other company. It's cheaper, so they're going to go build it there. And that will probably be why my next car will be, unfortunately, a Mustang or a Camaro. Specifically for that reason, because it may be small, but this country's biggest problem, in my opinion, is jobs and money. And we don't need to be sending money over to other countries to get the cars built there. That is a load of bullshit. I'm so disappointed in Chrysler for making that decision. Hopefully something changes, but I highly doubt it. Alright, I'll see you guys back when I make my uh, six things I like. As I said about this video, nothing would change. If I could go back and buy this car again, I probably would make the same decision. I'd buy it again. 